wear, I do not have my shirt on, and where better place to record a full day's of eating. So without further ado, let's get into the Dessert Junkies Guide to New York City. So while we're stuck in traffic waiting to get into the Lincoln Tunnel, which is about a 12 minute delay, it's gonna be 30 minutes to travel five miles from here. Here's some exposition. My wife is 33 weeks pregnant, so this is the last minication we can have before it's time to hunker down with another baby in seven weeks. We've gone to New York nine times, including this trip in the past two years. We are the master of the New York day trip. It takes about three hours and 30 minutes to get to New York from Baltimore, where we're from. More realistically, you should budget about four hours and YouTube policy won't let me tell you how quickly I've been able to do it with the Mustang. But we've come here for a variety of reasons. We've done almost all of the touristy things. We've been to pretty much all of the tall buildings worth visiting. We've had in-laws who we've needed to pick up from JFK. And yes, the direct flight to JFK instead of Dulles was a lot more affordable, even accounting for the tolls and going to New York and the time it takes to New York. So I think prices have evened out a little bit more, so we won't necessarily need to travel to JFK to pick up or send any more in-laws. They can just go to Dulles. But the primary reason for us visiting New York nowadays is we want to eat as much of it as possible. We love visiting our favorite food and drink places in New York City. So I hope you guys enjoy. No more machete order editing. This is just going to be a straight up full day of eating from here. Okay, so the completely scientific bathroom mirror shots. Right when I wake up, this is what I look like the day before we go to New York as you get a quick glance over at my care products and the bathroom scale. See how much I weigh with my phone in my hand. Let's call it 155. So I'm interested to see how this changes after a few days of eating in New York. Baltimore skyline with M&T Bank Stadium. I consider it a bonus part of the experience that when driving to New York, you get to go to these rest stops and they have attendants for you to pump your gas. The rest stops are essentially mall food courts with convenience stores as well. So this is not our first meal in the city, but this is our first meal on the road. We got three entrees from Panda Express, Sweet Fire, Orange Chicken, Beijing Beef, coming up on 1900 calories or so. but. I'll tell you this, you won't believe me. American Chinese food is one of my favorite foods. IDGAF about misappropriation because if it's delicious, misappropriate away. I'm about to buy two bags of this delicious popcorn. I like the original kettle corn flavor, but they have different flavors. And if the bus would move out of the way, this is one of the better views of Hudson Yards you could get while driving into the city. It doesn't look like much from the outside, but we are going to our actual first restaurant in the city, and that's Fuji Hibachi, Didi Soup Dumplings, and Hibachi. But here we go. Yep, and I ordered Samurai Steak Hibachi. This is 12 ounces, and it's only $33 which is within spitting distance of what we could get hibachi for from a chain back home. So pretty reasonably priced. There is no better way to navigate the notorious throng that is Times Square than using the Duder Light Keep Carrying Backpack. Ultimate hands-free. Hibachi was fine. We didn't eat hibachi at the actual hibachi table. I'm kind of superstitious. I always think, thanks. For interrupting the video. I always get superstitious and think that hibachi from the non hibachi table doesn't taste as well as if you just ate at a hibachi table, but it was fine. Restaurant was packed Friday night, but they got us our food within 10 minutes. I didn't eat much of the vegetables though, that was mostly the white. But now we're on to our next delicacy, and that Hershey's Chocolate World. And here we go. When we walk in, first thing the greeters do. 
give you a piece of candy. There we go. I'm ready for my free piece of candy. We had done the large chocolate cups before, but we're going to skip it this time. Done it before, but it's worthwhile just to be able to say you've done it before. Penny die, which doesn't seem represents that much value, but I'll go to town with this and let you know how it goes. Day one post-mortem, here's the view of the Hudson from outside our hotel room and looking north up 8th Avenue and you can see the Central Park Towers in 111 West 57th. But I am tilted slash salty that Hershey's Chocolate World didn't have the wicked themed milkshakes that I usually get. But I suppose that's on me for not thinking ahead and realizing that was probably a limited item. Um, yeah, those are bicycles, not trash bags, but sometimes there are trash bags dotting the street. But I did not leave Hershey's Chocolate World empty-handed. I got the peanut butter cup, which I regret. It's like, you know, not eating. It would probably have been better than just getting $8 worth of peanut butter. It's actually not $8 worth of peanut butter with a few Reese's Pieces. But anyways, on to day two. Alongside my Starbucks Nitro Cold Brew, which is the only Starbucks drink that I order, we are going to Awesome Dim Sum on 8th Avenue to stop by for a quick bite. This is our preferred dim sum place. I did have a protein shake this morning, but this is what normies will consider my first air quotes meal of the day. It's awesome dim sum on 8th Avenue, our preferred dim sum place. We ordered ahead for it to go to conserve time. This is fried rice and red bean with the exterior fried to a crisp. So this is gonna set me back or set me up 600 calories depending on how you look at it. But I really like sticky rice products. Zipola Bakery on 7th and 37. This, as of right now, is not my preferred place for Italian fried dough products. That would be Italy, but let's go inside and give it a taste test. Uh, products in here look very thick and shiny. So, these are thick. I may have to come back here and check how thick they are compared to the ones that we get from Italy. But yeah, these are thick. 32nd and Broadway, 32nd and 5th. We're going to frequent our most frequented eating area in the city, and that would be Koreatown. We will stop by Machi Machi on the way out. This is one of the few bubble tea style drinks that I actually like. But we're going first to Tout Le Jour. Sorry, I do not speak native French. We have plenty of these TLJs back home, but one thing in this TLJ, that they have that we do not have back home. And I always make sure to pick up plenty of these whoopie pies from TLJ before heading home. They're nothing really special, they're just whoopie pies. It's just I feel strongly about them because we can get whoopie pies from TLJ back home. And now we're going to our favorite food hall. Nope, it's not this Gray Street one. I actually, honest to goodness, advise against it. 
the shaved ice is just nothing like we can get back home, not in a complimentary way. Our favorite food hall is the one over here. This is Food Gallery 32. You can see what we like to get. We're gonna start off by getting the taiyaki. That would be Japanese sticky rice. We colloquially refer to these as just fish. Far from the stereotypical American preference, they're one of my favorite desserts and they're at their best when eaten fresh. You can get the matcha or regular flavor with a variety of fillings, but we mostly get the red bean, even though they also have custard, cream cheese, Nutella, and even strawberry flavors. Nutella is a close second to the red bean. The other dessert booths with churros and croffles, in my opinion, aren't worth visiting slash nothing special. Also, here's a little additional exposition. This video is not a personal all I can eat challenge. It is just a vlog about the usual places my family goes for food in New York City. I hope to introduce others to places that are not so mainstream. I'm dubbing over my live commentary as there's always the off chance that YouTube will 86 your channel's partner status because of the music playing in the background. That's why it's so tilting to record in restaurants. I should invest in a lav mic. But always without fail, I ordered the steak bowl from Kobe Q. Almost everything in this food hall is worth ordering. My wife's mom, aka my mother-in-law, likes the Chinese jamping. Do avoid the sushi though, and also do not, for whatever reason, go upstairs and order Pelicana chicken. Please give Food Gallery 32 a try if you're in the Koreatown area. Especially relevant for those who did not grow up in Asian households, please try the matcha taiyaki. Upstairs also has some coin karaoke booths, and they've recently added some claw machines. Anita La Mama Del Gelato is our preferred ice cream shop to visit anytime we're in Manhattan. Although I myself cannot speak to the Italian authenticity of the flavors, the density of the gelato and its smooth textures will impress even those visiting from overseas. Anita works her magic to make each flavor rich and creamy while not being overly sweet. I have a hard time going back to conventional ice cream after having Italian gelato. Flavors are seasonal and rotate often, so the experience of visiting Anita is different every time. This go around, I got three flavors in a double cone. The Black Forest, Cheesecake and Caramel Cookies, and the White Chocolate and Pistachio Cream. We've had plenty of Amarino and Venki Gelato, and we still prefer Anita's. Be prepared for a little bit of a wait time at Anita's Times Square and Flatiron District locations during peak tourist season. It's a rainy day in the Flatiron District, but we are here to pick up some of my favorite fried dough products outside of New Orleans Cafe du Mont Beignets, and that would be the Bombalones from Italy. Let's see if they have them today. Looks like I may be able to get the last one. All right, guys, look. I just carried my baby from Flatiron District up Broadway back to 8th and 44th, and this is what my veins look like. It's from carrying my baby, rucking my baby all the way up Broadway. One silver lining to it being a rainy day is very few lines. Haiti, new bubble tea place. When this place opened, there was lines all the way to the sidewalk through Broadway. So Haiti, let's go see what it's all about. And it still looks like there's a little bit of a line to get in. The fruits of our labor after the walk back through the rain Mango Sago from Haiti. But how tilting is it that they give you a paper boba straw? And because of the Haiti wait time, I am going to Angelina's Bakery Hell's Kitchen so that I may get exactly one item, and that is their Mont Blanc Bombalone to compare and contrast with the Bombalones I already have. And as it survived being jostled around in the rain, we got what is, in my opinion, the perfect Angelina Mont Blanc Bombalone. So let's do a compare and contrast of all the Bombalone we have. Before we begin the compare and contrast, y'all gotta ask, what's the big deal with Bombalones? Aren't they just large donuts? No, and I will fight you IRL if you say that. The leavening process 
for bomb balloons make them take a lot longer. For example, in Italy, from start to finish, when a new batch is ordered, it takes usually about two hours to make. They're made on a rolling basis, so you know they're almost always fresh. Sorry for a machete edit after I all but promised I wouldn't anymore, but I feel strongly about Bombalone, and I know I've been mispronouncing it the few times I've said it in a video, and I want to make Bombalone mainstream, but the leavening process also allows Bombalone to be a lot fluffier and airier than the conventional donut as I expertly bisect this Bombalone. It's almost like biting into a cloud. How can you make something that's so thick, but also fluffy and dense at the same time? I don't understand it. It's culinary alien space magic, I feel. How can you ever go back to eating these when you can have these? American donuts are typically cutouts, whereas bombalones are formed into balls. So the ones from Zipola, even though the top cream has been mashed as part of the transport, these are the most shapely, the largest diameter, and maybe not the tallest, but this is the largest one that I was able to get from Italy, it's definitely a little bit more amorphous, AKA not so shapely. Let me take the charging cable out of the way. But this one is a little bit more amorphous compared to the one from Zipola. Zipola definitely has the largest diameter. This one is jam flavored, but if you look over here, I can also have a plain one and then the plain one Definitely a little bit more amorphous, but all of the ones with filling like jam, pistachio, hazelnut or chocolate, they all begin as plain ones and the filling is added afterwards. This one is amorphous and maybe a little bit more tall, but diameter wise, not as large as the one from Zapola. And Angelina, if you really like the design, and the double filling style, go for the Angelina, but I really feel this at $8 and after New York associated taxes, almost $9, not the best value. One distinction of the Angelina Bombalone though is that you do get two different types of filling. But I do think the quality of the dough of the Bombalone from Italy is better than the dough quality from Zapola Bakery, even eating the day after. I think the Italy Bombalone hold better. Oh, and I also spent $3 on this. Yeah. This little doohickey wants it. There is a line to get into Joe's Pizza on Broadway. This is a line to Joe's Pizza. dinner using the hotel credit. Last item of food for the day, I promise. This is a chicken kebab from a street vendor. This is more break glass in case of emergency in case I get hungry overnight. 
So that's pretty much it for day two, and I'm ready for day two postmortem tomorrow. Day two postmortem hasn't caught up with me yet, but it's beginning to, and it's 8.45 a.m., which means it's 7.45 a.m. because daylight savings, so hasn't quite caught up with me yet. Still crushing it. At least it stopped raining. So we're at Madison Avenue, Upper East Side for lottery. They have plenty of lotteries back home in DC, but this lottery has one particular item that we can't get back home, which you will see momentarily. That would be these large macarons. And at the end of the day, these are air quotes, just macarons, but we feel strongly about them because we have plenty of lottery back home, but none that sell any of the large macarons. The one in Georgetown used to, but they don't get them anymore. So I finished my full American breakfast. This is actually one of the meals here that I can actually balance my macros. Anyone who's been doing this a while enough knows that if you can't hit your macros on the day, hit them for a week. So it'll take a few days of eating something brutal like 30% fat, 50% protein, and 20% carbs to offset the poor macronutrients I've been having. So I will go back and probably get another platter. It's day three and I realized that I haven't done a whole hotel room overview. This is the IHG and Intercontinental Hotel. I like the overhead shower. This is a four star hotel, but it feels more like a four and a half star hotel with how modern everything is. We did not buy that whole thing of dish soap. This was the smallest size that they sold at the Walgreens across the street. We meant to bring a smaller size so that we could wash the baby bottles and I could wash my blender bottle as you'll see momentarily. But going over to the main room, you'll see some more components of our travel carry. I did not bring my greens blend. I just used an empty greens container so I can bring some scoops of whey protein and I can mix it with the blend jet bottle. It's really been an invaluable component of our travel and just a drop of that dish soap into the blend jet bottle, swirl with water and it's clean. Hotel has some amenities including a stocked mini bar so that whole row up top if you consume every item probably cost you or set you back two hundred dollars but yeah this is the hotel in which we stayed and we are about to say goodbye to it and we did request extra a microwave and a fridge Microwave, obvious reasons, so we can heat the baby food, heat the baby milk, and here's some other components of our travel. On rink level in the Rockefeller Plaza is Chip City Cookies. I went ahead and got three cookies. One chocolate peanut butter, one white chip macadamia nut, and a confetti cookie. So I can be a little bit of a cookie snob because I'm spoiled by having a four or five cookie back home in DC, but I was pleasantly surprised by Chip City Cookies. These are of a higher dough quality than what you would find over at Crumble. And I'm a Crumble cookie addict. I know they're just very sugary and most of the appeal is a novelty. That won't stop me from going back to Crumble though. Chip City cookies, I do feel is worth going back to and trying the different flavors. This is confetti flavor. It's comparable to the confetti cookies that we have over in 4-5 back home. Bill's Burger Bar gets my vote for best burger in Midtown. Its location is accessible in Rockefeller Center behind the 5th Avenue Lego store. During busy tourist season, you can see the two hour long line from the Lego store wrap around to the restaurant. I got the ranch hamburger, which comes with bacon and a pretzel bun, and I ordered a side of onion ring separately. I also ordered a s'mores milkshake, more so out of curiosity because I saw most everyone else order a milkshake, but it was nothing special. Burgers are good to go, milkshakes are passable and overly sweet. And this was about the time we needed to head back home to Baltimore, but not without making a massive food hall trip. Thank you, New York City, for hosting a whole weekend of eating. Number one fashion accessory we saw was the Burberry scarf. 
Last summer we were here, it felt like the entirety of Europe was in Midtown. Still feels like that sometimes. Let me know what other city we should hit up. My name is David and I'll see you. Okay, I'll talk you through our NYC food haul. First we have some to-go Korean soup. These bags of popcorn that we got from the New Jersey rest stops. Chip City cookies. I'm already down one, so I only have two. To-go order of BB.Q. Two bombalones from Italy. One bombalone from Zapola. I ate the other one. One bombalone from Angelina's Bakery. Two drinks from Machi Machi. We're down one, so we started with three. Lottery, we still have two small macarons and five large macarons. Associated drinks from Japan and associated pastries from TLJ. And we're down two of the taiyaki because they sell them five for 25. And we got some pokeballs that we're not going to eat. But that's our typical food haul on the way home. And no, this isn't actually part of what we got from New York. It was just there on my dining room table. I think inside some Oreos do not get these. They're not very good. But yeah, that's uh, usually what it looks like when we come home from New York in our haul. Oh, and uh, leftover dim sum. So I am a little bit softer, but let's see how much I weigh after a full weekend's worth of eating in New York City at 7.52 a.m., which means it feels closer to 6.52 a.m. because everyone loves daylight savings. And here we go. Let's see. I am clocking in with phone almost a whole three pounds heavier. And now for the proper video conclusion. The total calorie count could have been higher because I didn't include the calories from the food we brought, like the protein shakes, and the total cost could have been higher because I didn't include the food that we had wanted to take back home. And I also didn't include the many souvenirs we got, like this blue bottle bottle. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Because of the rain, I couldn't visit all the places I wanted to, like Bibble and Sip that I showed in the beginning of the video. Please leave suggestions for other places you think I should include in videos like this to make more mainstream. And also, please leave suggestions for what city I should visit next to do a video like this. Please say New Orleans. I need a reason to go back to New Orleans. Now, enjoy the video outro of the unboxing and eating of the Hershey's Large Chocolate Peanut Butter Cup. One pound of peanut buttery, chocolatey goodness. Hershey's Chocolate World exclusive Reese's Stuff Your Cup. You have four main ingredients to choose from. In my case, I did Reese's Pieces, marshmallows, forgot the other ones, we'll figure it out. And you get two drizzles on top of that. All in. edible cup. My goodness. Do not bet against the American eater. Don't do it. You can absolutely eat the bowl exterior too. Look, the lid. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The lid is chocolate, you can eat it, and there you go. There's my custom Reese's Cup. I have a video, the attendee making it for me too, and their recommendation for how to eat it is to break apart the lid and use it as a dip, as though. Yes, Miranda. Yes, Miranda, when you're six months old, when you're six months old, you can have some. When you're six months old, you can have some, but you would just break the lid and use this as though you were using like chips to dip salsa. Yes, Miranda, she knows what's good. And guess what? You can't have some even when you're old enough. But it's one pound of chocolate peanut buttery goodness.